Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this panda, which was designed by Brooklyn's Creations 1234 on Instagram. And here's her design. I can show you if it would focus. There we go. Here's her panda design. It's so adorable. When she asked me to make a tutorial for this panda, I was like, I have to do it. It's just so cute. Um, I also want to just say thank you to Brooklyn for being so patient with me because I believe she asked me to make this tutorial for her in like September or August. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I love this design. And then things just kept coming up and school just kept happening. And I, it took me so long to make this tutorial. I'm pretty sure it's been like three months. So sorry about that, Brooklyn. And thank you so much for being patient with me. Um, school just kind of got in the way and things kept happening. But I'm so happy to be sharing this design with you guys now because I absolutely love it. I've also been trying to come up with a panda design for years. And when she sent me this one, I was like, this, this is like such a good panda design. So... Yeah, thank you so much for asking me to do the tutorial because this design is just adorable. So here's the design. As you can see, she also gave him a little piece of bamboo, which I think is so cute. And I'm just going to show you her Instagram page real quick so you can see her panda. So this was the panda she sent me that she asked me to do a tutorial for, and it's just, it's so adorable. Like, look at that. Also, you can see her Instagram account right there, Brooklyn's Creations. I'll have her Instagram link down below if you want to follow her. I think you should. She's amazing. She's so nice and she makes so many fun things. Look, she made my clown. That's so... He's bald. Um, I love that clown though. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so you should check her out. I'll have her link down below in the description. But back to the panda design because I have a couple more things I want to say about it. Um, I think this is a fairly easy design. Uh, I also have to say I did tweak this design a little bit from when she first gave it to me. I had issues attaching the arms. So then I had to touch him a different way. Um, I, I think I adjusted the head a tiny bit too because I was having issues with the head as well. So it is tweaked a little bit from her original design, but this is her design and I, <laughs> I messaged her and she said she didn't mind me tweaking it a little bit, so hopefully everything's fine. Um, but yeah. Also, here's this panda that I made. Ignore his arms. His arms are awkward, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, that I made, that I made with the eye spots because I noticed that these designs were missing the eye spots. I think on the black one it looks okay without the eye spots, but this guy, he needed some. So I figured out how to place the eye spots, and on this guy I was also experimenting with a different way to do the arms. So let's all ignore his arms because I'm going to redo them, but for the head I think that this looks pretty good. So... Today, I'm going to be doing the eye spots and show you guys how to do the eye spots if you want them. But I think this design does work, especially if you're doing it in black without the eye spots. Because then you can just see the eyes, you know. But, yeah, so we'll get into it because this has been an extremely long intro. So, of course, for this design, what you're going to need is some bands and whatever colors you want for your panda. Today, I'm going to be using white and then blue for, like, the darker bit. So the black in this guy is going to be blue in this tutorial. And then I will be showing you how to do the bamboo, and I'm just going to be using the same colors, so I'm going to be using pastel green and then a uh, darker green for the other part of the bamboo. And, um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, of course you're going to want some safety eyes or bees, whatever you want. I'm using safety eyes. I don't know what size these are, but they're... Do I know what size these are? I don't know what size these are. Um, I think, I want to say they're 6 millimeter. um safety eyes so I'm using that size you can use safety eyes bees whatever you have you can also use bands and if you want to do cheeks you're gonna to want to get whatever color you want for the cheeks so I think that's it we'll get started this is a fairly easy design so I feel like if you're a beginner it shouldn't be too bad there is a quite a bit of attaching because we attach the head to the body and then we attach the ears to the head and then of course arms and legs I will be showing you how to attach the arms and legs like this not like whatever I did to this poor man I was experimenting don't ignore that um but yeah so as always, the pattern and everything will be in the description down below. So pattern, band count, all of that. I'm also sorry, my camera keeps dropping <laughs> a little bit, but it's okay. Just adjusting. Okay. So yeah, pattern, band count, all that's in the description. If you want a guesstimation band count that I'm just going to give you right now, that is probably wrong. Um, I'm going to guess that this design probably takes around 200 bands, maybe a little more than that. So it shouldn't be too bad. But if you want to see the official band count, check the description. Um, also, I forgot to say, you're going to need a hook. Whatever kind of hook you have is fine. You can use crochet hook, rainbow loom hook, plastic hook. I'm going to be using my double-ended hook today just because I really like this hook. Um, but yeah. Also, if you're wondering where to get my hook, because I always get questions about that, 
it's a discontinued rainbow Low hook. You can't buy it anymore. I'm sorry. And of course, you're going to need a C clip or just something to mark your rows with. So that could be a C clip, S clip, paper clip, just something to mark where you start and end. Now we're going to get started. So we are going to start at the top of the head. So we are going to be doing this piece. And I'm going to show you how to do the eye spots today because I like the eye spots. Um, but you don't have to do the eye spots. This guy didn't have eye spots and he looks adorable. This one also doesn't have eye spots and he looks adorable. So you don't have to do the eye spots, but I did want to give the option of having eye spots because I know it's like a big part of like a panda, I guess. But, um, yeah. So I'm picking up bands and then we are going to get started. So... So to start, we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So this is going to be one, two, and then three. And then we're going to be putting six stitches into this cap band. So we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. So the whole cap band, both ends back on our hook, push the back loop over the front loop. That'll be our first stitch. We have to do five more, so I'll show you again. But this time it's going to be a little different, so we're going to go back through the cat band. We're going to pull a band through just the cat band, so not this last loop. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. We're going to push the back loop over the front loop. And then we're going to push this loop from last time over as well. And we're going to repeat that thing we just did four more times. So we have six loops in total in the cat band. So I'll show you one more time. So we're going to go through the cat band. Pull a band through just the cat band. Put both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and then push the loop from last time over as well. Like that. And like I said, we have to do that three more times. So I'll just repeat that. It's four. Five. And then six. So once you've done six stitches, you're going to want to count to make sure you have six. So we're going to start by counting the one on our hook. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you've made sure you have six loops, instead of going into the cat band, you're going to go in through this first loop here. And then you're going to pull a band through just that loop. And then just do the same thing. So you'll push the back one over the front one. And then you'll push the loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting our C-clip on this one. Like that. So that was the first step. Um, what we're going to be doing for the next row is we are going to be increasing everything. And what that basically means is that every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And yeah. So we have six loops right now. At the end of the next row, we should be at 12 loops. And I'm picking up bands again. You know, I feel like the lighting is always so inconsistent in all my tutorials, especially because I've been moving, like, from college and then back home. Like, this lighting is totally different than the lighting I even had in my blueberry tutorial, and I'm just like, man, my lighting is never consistent. I mean, usually you guys can always see, but it's just like, I feel like I'm just so non-consistent with my lighting lately. Anyways, we're going to be increasing everything. So this stitch already has one stitch in it, but we're going to go back in and do another stitch because that is what an increase is. Like that. So all an increase is, is you're doing two stitches per loop. So this one, we just put the second one in it. So now we're going to go to the next loop. We're going to pull a band through. Both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from that one time over as well. And then we just do that again. And then that would be an increase. So I'll show you again. We'll move on to the next loop. You go into the next loop, you make one stitch. You go back in, do another stitch, and that's an increase. And we just repeat this all the way around. So we're just putting two stitches per loop until we get to the C-clip. And then once we get to the C-clip, we'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. 
and we'll move it up. So we'll take it off this loop that it's on and move it up onto the loop that is on our hook. And then we are going to count. So we should be at 12 loops. So we'll start. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so for the next row, we're going to be increasing every other. I also had to pause to turn on my ring light because I'm like, why is the lighting being weird? I didn't notice I didn't have my ring light on and I was like, oops, but it's on now, so we should be good. Even though I think the lighting looked fine. I don't know. The lighting in my room's weird. It's fine. Um, but yeah, we're going to be increasing every other. So what that basically means is we're going to be alternating between doing single stitches and an increase. <laughs> and once again, I'm picking up bands. <sighs> okay. So, so this first one here is going to be our single stitch, so the next one is going to be an increase, so this one will be an increase, and then because we just increased, the next one will be a single stitch, so we're just going to do one stitch, and then because we did a single stitch, the next one will be an increase, so we're just going to keep doing that all the way around, we're just going to alternate between doing an increase and then a single stitch until we get to the c-clip then at the end of this row I believe we should be at 18 loops I nearly messed up there I nearly did two increases in a row but I just barely didn't okay Picking up bands again. It's always weird whenever I pause my camera because I also went to go make all the legs and stuff so I could like film this tutorial without stopping too much because I realized, oh, I forgot to do that before I started filming too. And I'm like trying to remember where I was in the tutorial. Whenever I pause for too long, it always throws me off a little bit when I come back, but, but I know where we are, so we're good. Also, I don't know if you can hear my dad talking. He's talking quite loud, but he's messing around with my sister, so... It's fine. I also feel like I just have such a loud family. Like, we're very, very loud. I don't know why. It was funny, because when I came back from school, I was like, well, I lived alone, obviously. And, well, I had a roommate, but she didn't talk to me. So I was used to being very quiet all the time, and literally when I came back the first week when I came home, my voice just felt so tired, because I, I talked so much with my family, so it was just like, man, I'm not used to talking this much. Because <laughs> I just, we talk a lot. Anyways, once you move your C-clip up, we're going to count. We should be at 18 loops, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Like that. So now for the, it's going to get a bit repetitive. We're going to be doing three rows normal. So just three rows of single stitches. And we're also going to start adding the eye patches. So if you want to do the eye patches, we're going to do them right now. If you don't like the eye patches and don't want to do the eye patches, just ignore this step. And you would just do three rows of single stitches. But I'm going to stay on camera for all three rows so I can tell you where to place the... Um, like the color for if you want the eye patch, so yeah. But like I said, we're doing three rows of single stitches, so it's just one stitch in every loop until you get back to the C clip. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 18 loops. So for row one, we are going to be putting the eye spots on row on um, stitches. Ugh. We're gonna be putting the eye spots on stitches seven and ten. So like the seventh stitch and the tenth stitch, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to do six single stitches, just going forward. And once again, this step is only if you want to do the color. If you don't, just ignore this, but yeah. So we're going to do six single stitches. So the one with a C-clip on it is going to be one. This one will be two. Three. Four. Five. And then six. So once you've done six single stitches, you're going to want to count to make sure, and the way you do that is you're just going to count backwards, so you'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you'll go into the next loop, and you're going to want to get whatever color you want for the eye patches on your panda, or I guess whatever your second color is. 
for me that's blue and we're gonna make a slip stitch so we're gonna pull it through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one now we're gonna do two single stitches in white so we're once again gonna pull the white band through everything on our hook then put the back one over the front one and we'll just do a single stitch and then we're gonna flip back to our blue so we're gonna pull this band through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one so let me recap what we just did we just did six single stitches then on the seventh one we did a blue band and we slip stitched and then we did two white ones so that's eight nine and then on ten we did another blue one and we slip stitch when we flip colors so now the rest of the way is just going to be single stitches in white so we're going to do that so we'll just do single stitches in white once again I need to pick a bands I feel like picking a bands always takes me so long even though I think I already mentioned this once before but someone said I pick up bands so fast and I feel like I'm so slow but yeah. So we're just going to do single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip. And once again, we're going to slip stitch after the blue one just to switch colors a bit cleaner. We're just going to keep going. Oh man, I feel like I'm going to sneeze suddenly. Nope, I think we're good. <laughs> the sneeze came and then it left. Okay, then once you get to the C-clip, you make a stitch and move it up. So it should look something like this. Um, I'm not going to count, but if you did count, you should still have 18 loops. So that was row one of, si of, of like row one single stitches. We have to do three rows, so we're going to do two more. And we're still going to be adding the eye spots, so yeah. But once we have these two placed, it's kind of easy to see where to put the eye spots because it's in the same general area, so... So technically, we're going to be putting the eye spots on the 6th, 7th, 9th, and then 10th loops this row. But I'm going to show you how I look at it just because it makes it easier than counting. So we're going to stop. So we're going to do single stitches in white until we get to this one white loop before the blue loop. So we're going to just do single stitches until then. So we're just going to do single stitches all the way. And then once you get to the one white loop before the blue loop, we're going to switch to blue. And we're going to do two blue stitches right next to each other. And once again, we're still only doing single stitches. But we're going to slip stitch to blue. Then we're just going to do a single stitch in blue because we're not flipping colors. And then we're going to slip stitch back to white. And then we're going to slip stitch back to blue and do two blue stitches. And we're only slip stitching, if you notice, when we flip colors, so we're flipping back to blue. So we got a slip stitch. So we pull it through everything on our hook. And then put the back one over the front one. And then on the next loop, we're going to just do a single stitch. And then once you get back to this white loop, you're going to slip stitch back to white. And then once again, the rest of the way will just be single stitches in white. I also feel like I should just mention, this is just where I put the, like, splashes for the eyes, just because that's where I put the eyes. I think in Brooklyn's version of her panda, she puts the eyes a little bit more farther apart, so the eye spots probably wouldn't line up right. I guess it's just preference. Um, but I'm just showing you where to put the eye spots in the same spot I put the eyes, like I put the eyes, if that makes sense. But I guess you could technically put these spots farther apart if you wanted your panda to have more space between his eyes. And you would do the same steps, you would just leave an extra single stitch in the middle. I also think it's kind of funny because you guys could be watching this tutorial at like any time of the year and I got Christmas nails, we got 
some reindeers. I like my nails though, they're kind of cute. But it is around Christmas time when I'm filming this. As Actually, when I'm filming this, it is nine days till Christmas. I know this because my sister told me we're in the single digits today for Christmas. So yeah, that's why I have a little bit of a festive nail. Anyways, that was row two. Here's what it should look like, and if you counted, you should still be at 18 loops. I'm going to wait till I finish all three rows to count, so I'm going to move on to the next row. And we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing as we've been doing the past couple rows. Um, and we're going to be just be placing uh, the eye patch color on the 6th and the ninth bands. But similar to last row, there's an easier way to do this than if you want to count. At least in my opinion, but who knows. So... We're going to do single stitches in white all the way up to the blue band, so all of these are going to be in white. And we're just going to do a bunch of single stitches. And then once you get to this blue loop, we're going to switch back to blue. So we're going to slip stitch back to blue. So you pull it through everything on your hook, then push the back one over the front one. And then we're going to slip stitch back to white. So we're going to pull a band through everything in our hook. And then push the back one over the front one. And then this next one's just going to be a single stitch in white. So let's make a stitch like normal. And then we're going to slip stitch back to blue. So we'll pull a band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one. And now we're going to slip stitch back to white. So we do the same thing. We pull a white band through everything on our hook. Then push the back one over the front one. And now the rest of the way is just going to be single stitches. So we'll just do single stitches the rest of the way. So we technically did put it on the 6th um, and ninth. It's just I didn't count. I kind of just walked you through it. But if you were to count, this would be the 6th and this would be the ninth band. But like I said, we're just doing single stitches the rest of the way. I wish it is funny because I always try to film like Christmas tutorials around Christmas time, but I did have some non Christmas tutorials this year that I wanted to film around Christmas time, like I did the blueberry tutorial recently. And now I'm doing this one and I just have Christmas nails, but you know, I guess it doesn't matter too much. But I think it's in my duck design tutorial as well in that one. That one's from like a long time ago, but I have Christmas nails and I think it's funny because they're like not Christmas designs and you guys could be making these at any time of the year and and I'm just festive because I filmed this around Christmas time. Which is kind of fun if you think about it, but I don't know. Just random thoughts, I think, I guess. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're going to make a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it. And you'll move your C-clip up, so you'll take it off that band it's on and move it up onto the band that is on your hook. So if you count around, you should be at 18, so... We'll count, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Why do I have 19? Can I count? Hold up, I'm going to count off camera, so you're just going to hear me counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I have 18, I just can't count. So, yeah, um... Okay, so that was it for our single rows. Now we're going to start decreasing a little bit. So we're going to decrease every other. So that means every other stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So this is very similar to increasing every other, where we kind of alternated. It's the same thing, but instead of doing a single stitch and then an increase, we're now going to be doing a single stitch and then a decrease, and we just alternate all the way around. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this one's going to be our single stitch, which means the next one is going to be a decrease. So we're going to grab the inside part, of one loop, back part of the next loop, and then you just make a stitch like you usually would. And that's a decrease. So I'll show you again. So we're going to make a single stitch. And then we're going to do a decrease. So we grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. That's a decrease. And because we just decreased, we'll do a single stitch. And then because we did a single stitch, we're going to do a decrease. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So we're just alternating. So we do single stitch, 
and then a decrease. So we do a single stitch, and we do a decrease. And then once you get to the C-clip, instead of moving it up, what we're going to do is we're going to go through that band that has a C-clip on it. We're going to pull the band through everything on our hook. We're going to pull it, push the back one over the front one and pull it tight, but not too tight. And then we're going to take our C-clip out. And then that's it for the head. So now we have our panda head. And it looks a little weird right now, but it'll all make sense in a second. So we're going to set this aside. And... What do we do next? Uh, we need to start on the body next, I believe. So let me get some more blue bands out. And then we will get started. So we're going to start on the body next. Um, that's pretty much it for the head. I know it was like kind of a sudden end, but we finished. So we're just going to set it aside. And we're going to start on the body. Also, I just realized I forgot to kind of count around to see how many loops you have left. Um, you could still do it even though it's tied, so you should have been at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you should have been at like 12 loops if you after um, decreasing every other when you tied it off. But if you had like say 11 loops or even 10 loops, 13, you're probably fine because we're just attaching it to the head after this. But... Sorry, I need to flip pages. <laughs> but we're going to get started on his body. So we're going to be starting with our darker color, I guess your second color for your panda that isn't white, so that's going to be blue. And we're going to start it the same way we started the head. So we're going to be doing a tripled cap band with six stitches in it. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start on the body. I accidentally dropped my camera, so I don't know where it cut off there. But we're going to, like I said, be starting it the same way. So we're going to start with a tripled cap band. So we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. And then we're going to be putting six stitches into this cap band. So we'll start by putting, by pulling a band through the whole cap band, putting both ends back on our hook, and then pushing the back one over the front one. Then we'll go back through the cap band, pull a band through just the cap band, both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And then we're just going to repeat that same thing four more times. So we have six loops in total. So you'll just pull it through the cap band. Both ends back on. Back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over as well. And I'm not going to explain too much because we already did one of these as tutorials. So I'm going to go a little fast here and just finish putting the six stitches we need in. Like that. So if you count, you should be at six loops, so we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go in through this loop. We're going to pull a band through just this loop, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, then push the loop from last time over as well, and then we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. Like that. So for the next step, very similar to the head as well, we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And at the end of this row, we should be at 12 loops. And once again, I feel like I say this all the time. Do I need to let you know every single time I pick up bands? I don't think so. Just assume if I'm not looming, I'm picking up bands. But I always feel the need to let you know. Who knows why? Anyways... We're going to be doing increases all the way around. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And once again, I'm not explaining this too in depth because we've already increased quite a bit for this tutorial. So hopefully you have the hang of it. But we're just putting two stitches per loop until we get to the C-clip. I don't know. I think my family is stretching because I just hear... My sister and dad talking. They've been, my dad's been trying to be more healthy, I guess. So he's trying to exercise, but he's injured his knee like a long time ago. So he can't do a lot of like running exercises. So his latest obsession is stretching with my sister. 
And yeah, I can hear him stretching through the walls. Man, our house has such thick walls. <laughs> Not thick, thin, wrong word. Um, But yeah. Anyways, you're going to move your C-clip up. And if you count around, you should be at 12 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So now for the next row, we are going to be increasing every third. And I don't think we've done that for this pattern yet. No, we haven't. But what it basically means is we're going to be doing two single stitches and then on the third loop we do an increase and then we just keep repeating that all the way around until we get to the C-clip. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay. So, this is going to be our first single stitch, so the one with the C-clip on it will be one. Then we'll do another single stitch, so that's two. And then this loop the third loop I guess because we just did two single stitches so we have one two on this one which is three we're gonna do an increase so we'll do two single two stitches in that one loop which is an increase and then we're just gonna keep repeating that so we're gonna do two single stitches so we're gonna go one and then two and then on the third loop we'll do an increase so we put two stitches into this one loop and we just keep repeating this all the way around so we'll do two single stitches so one and then two then we increase and we do that again so one two and then we do an increase Okay. Now once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it, and then you'll move it up. And at the end of this row, you should be at 16 loops, so if we count, we should be at 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So this is what it should look like right now. And now is where it's going to get a bit repetitive, but we are going to do some color switching. So we're going to do two rows of single, just two rows normal in black. Then we're going to do two no two rows normal in white. And then we're going to do one row normal in black. So we do five rows normal total, but two are in black. Then we switch to white, and then we go back to black. So I'm going to stay on and probably do all the rows with you. Uh, this guy isn't too big, so we should be able to get through them pretty quickly. Hopefully. So we're going to do two rows normal, like I said, in our darker color first. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 16 loops. So we're just going to do single stitches all the way around for two rows in our blue color. So this is row one, and we're just doing single stitches all the way around. There was something I was going to tell you guys or talk to you guys about. I just, I just completely forgot. Oh, that's what it was. I don't know what it's been, but since I got home from university, I feel like I've been hearing my Texas accent more. Like, sometimes I feel like you can't tell I'm from Texas, but then I don't know what it's been lately, but I feel like I sound more yeehaw. I don't think I picked up the, tac like the Texas accent from where I was because I live in Texas, but I was kind of a little bit more, like, farther east Texas, I guess, because I live a little bit more west and I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I lived somewhere else for a while, I'm hearing my accent more, and I don't know if it's a Texas accent or it's just like the accent I have from where I live, but I don't know, I feel, it's funny, I don't know, because before I feel like I could not hear my accent at all, but then lately I've actually been hearing my own accent a bit, and I'm like, ew. But anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're going to move it up, and that's one row of single stitches in... Our blue color, like I said, we have to do two before we switch, so this is one. I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Yeah. I, 
don't know what it was that I said the other day, and I was like, that was like the most Texas thing I have ever said. <laughs> I don't know what it is. See, the other thing is, I don't know if I lost some of my accent when I went over there, because my, like, my sibling bred, she has a very, she has a thicker Texas accent than me, so I don't know if it's because I came back, I'm hearing my family's accents, and I'm picking up their accents. Like, I don't know what's going on there, but I've just been noticing that we, like, my whole family, we totally have a slight Texas accent, so... There's that. I don't know what to do with that information, but I thought I'd share it with you. So we're going to start row two of single stitches, and we're still in dark blue. Or I don't know. I want to say dark blue because it's technically the darker color because we're doing white and blue, but it's actually a light pastel -y blue. You know what this reminded me? I went to Michael's the other day because I... What did I need? I needed something else for another project. And I went to Michael's and I was like, oh, I should check if they have a pastel bucket because I've almost used all my pastel bands. And they didn't have any pastel buckets, which is so disappointing. Have you, Do your guys' Michael's still have pastel buckets? I need to know if they still exist. Rainbow likes to, like, randomly pull bands and that scares me. Because I totally love these pastel bands that were from the pastel bucket from Michael's and I just used them all so quick. They're just so pretty. I also took them all to college with me and I was like, yes, these, these are the ones I need to use so but um I've nearly used them all I only have I only have like some colors left like I've used all my purple all my blue I think I still have a lot of like green yellow and orange but I wanted more blue and purple but I don't think I, I can't find any so that's fun okay so once you get to the band with a c-clip on it I just caught myself before I nearly did something wrong but after the second row of blue single stitches or like your whatever your second collar is we're gonna flip to white so once you get to the one with the c-clip on it you're gonna slip stitch on this one so you're gonna pull this band through everything on your hook then you're gonna push the back one over the front one and then you'll move your c-clip up so we just slip stitch to white and now we're gonna do two rows in white and the reason that we flip colors on the c-clip is just because it makes everything look a lot cleaner so yeah but we're going to do two rows in white now. So you're going to want to get your white bands. I just I just made a mess. Oops. Bam. Yeah. You know, I still haven't gotten the Rainbow Loom. I've seen a lot of people getting the, the like treasure boxes, I think they're called. Or just like the boxes of bands. I haven't had any yet. I should have put them on my Christmas list. I've been dying to try them out, but I can't, like, I don't know. I can't justify a reason to buy them yet, because I have plenty of bands. I don't need to buy a box of bands. But at the same time, I see everyone with them, and I'm like, I want to try them out. But, I don't know. Maybe I'll get some soon, because I'm completely, like... I'm kind of starting to run out of a few colors. Like, I think I need to stock up on skin tone bands again. And, for sure, pastel bands. So... Maybe I need to do a rainbow. It's been so long since I've done a rainbow order. Maybe it's time. But we're just, I don't know if I already said this, but we're just doing two rows of single stitches. So I'm kind of just talking to fill the silence. Yeah. It's honestly exciting if I do get to put a rainbow man order in because I, I don't think I've made a rainbow man order. When did I do one last? I did one last in the summer. So that was like. I think I did do one in June, so that was like six months ago now. I think it's time for more bands. It's also fun because I only usually put two band orders in per year because I usually... Because my designs are so small, it takes me so long to use all my bands I usually order because I like to just do one big order and then it lasts me a while. But I don't think this would be a big order so much as like a kind of refill order because I just need like... I need pastels, I need skin tone bands. Stuff like that. I also haven't used a lot of- I, last time I ordered I got a couple fancier bands, I was like, ooh, I could use these in bracelets, but I haven't been making bracelets a ton. But I feel like I should make some more bracelets, I think it could be fun. Okay, so that was one row of single stitches of white, but technically row three of just rows of single stitches. We need to do another row in white, so I'm just go ahead and do that. Yeah, I really need to organize my band collection, though, because it's kind of everywhere. Like, I came home from college, and I, I took bands with me, but then I brought them back, and 
Oh, my band collection's a disaster. I need to definitely reorganize like everything. Cause I honestly don't know what colors I have. Like what colors I have where is like the problem. Cause I know, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Bam. I think I'm gonna make some bracelets though while I'm home. Maybe I'll just sell them on my Etsy after. Cause the thing is I always make bracelets and I never wear them because like I don't like having like bigger rainbow balloon bracelets on my wrist, but I know some people wear them and they look so cool, but I don't know if it's just like, with what I do, it never makes sense to wear bracelets because I'm always like drawing and painting and like crafting. And then, I don't know, I don't like wearing bigger bracelets because of that. But, I do want to make more rainbow balloon bracelets, so maybe I'll just make a bunch and then stick them all on my Etsy and be like, here, if anyone wants to buy them, they can. Because I have so many fancy bands that I know I could use for Lumigurmi, but I'm like, no, no, no. They're, these are, like, good for bracelets. I did bracelets for so long, like, rainbow balloon bracelets. For so many years, I just made bracelets. But I've been on a Lumigurmi thing for I don't know how many years now. I think it's been, like, it's been a long time, but I've been on a bit of a Lumigurmi kick, so it's fine. So that was row two of white. So we're going to switch back to blue. And I'm going to pick up some blue bands. Also, you guys keep kind of seeing my hoodie. I have a... A... What is this? Avatar The Last Airbender, I couldn't remember. Hoodie on that my mom got me and surprised me with yesterday. And I was like, this is so cool. I don't know. Sometimes I, f I just ramble a lot in tutorials. I mean, you guys probably know this if you've watched more than one of mine. Okay. So this will be our last row of single stitches and we're gonna slip stitch back to black to black I keep wanting to say to our second color but we're gonna undo this first stitch we did on the C clip because it should have been in blue I always do this but we're gonna do it in we're gonna undo it and we're gonna redo it in blue so we're gonna slip stitch to blue and then we'll put our C clip back and now we will do our last row of single stitches in our second color. Ah, my camera. Gosh dang it. Sorry. <laughs> it's because I used to stick Tsum Tsums in my desk drawer and like put the camera stand and it would stay, but because I took a lot of things with me, my desk drawer is like empty. So my camera doesn't stay as well. I'm gonna have to fix that when I film the next tutorial because it's fallen twice in this tutorial already. I edited one out and I just caught it right now so we're okay. But we'll see. Is my camera gonna fall a third time? Probably. Believe it or not though, after we finish this body, we're more or less done. Because we just attach everything together. He comes really quickly. Like, he comes together really quickly after you have all of the two main bits done. Then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just move it up. I need to move it up, but I'm completely out of bands on my hand, so I'm picking up more. Okay. So we're going to make a stitch on the one that has our C-clip on it and move it up. And by the way, for the rest of this design, we are going to be in our, this blue color. We're not switching back to white at any point. So for the next row, we are going to be decreasing every other. So we did this earlier in this design as well. So it's the same thing. We're going to alternate between doing a single stitch and then a decrease all the way around until we get to the C-clip. So I'll show you in case you forgot, but... This one will be our single stitch, so the next one is going to be a decrease. So we're going to go grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and make a stitch. And then because we did a decrease, we're going to do a single stitch. Then we'll do a decrease. And we do a single stitch. And we just keep doing this until we get to the C-clip. So we're just alternating between doing decreases and single stitches. I also forgot to mention and forgot to count, but at the end of our, I guess, five rows total of single stitches, you should have still been at 16 loops. I didn't count because I usually don't count, 
but if you wanted to make sure you didn't accidentally increase or anything, you, sh you should have probably counted, but I forgot to tell you to, so whoops. And then once we get to the C-clip, we'll make a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it and move it up. So now you should be at 11 loops. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 loops. Okay, sorry. I just remembered we need cotton balls, so I had to go grab some. But we are going to be stuffing him now before we close him up. So you're going to want to get whatever you're using for stuffing. You can use polyfill. You can use tissues if you don't have anything. But I like using cotton balls, so I'm going to tear these up and then just stuff them in. I'm going to take my hook out. Um, as long as you don't pull too much, the C-clip should hold it. We're just going to stuff him a little bit. And then the next step is just going to be closing him up. Oops. <laughs> Okay. I think at this point it is good if you overstuff this a little bit because when we close it up there is a little bit of space. So I overstuffed him just slightly. I mean he's very full but it'll be fine once we close it up. Don't overstuff it to the point where you can see like holes in your loom creation but if you add a little bit more stuffing than you usually do I think it's a good idea for this guy. Okay so we're going to stick our hook back in like that. And now we're just going to decrease everything until close. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease until we, until we can't decrease anymore. And at this point you could just take the C-clip out. And we're just going to decrease until you can't anymore. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So we're just decreasing. I keep dropping my bands, oh my god. Okay. Also, if you heard that noise, that was my hand on the desk. I don't want you guys to wonder what that was, but that was just my hand. Because my desk is so creaky. Okay, I think we can do two more decreases, so this will be one, and I think the next one's going to be it. So once it's to the point that you can't really decrease anymore, you're going to pick up that last decrease on your hook. And then you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we're just going to hide our tail by pulling it into our loom creation so we can't see it. So you're just going to come up through right here. And then just pull it in. And then you'll just squish it around a little bit. And then we have the body of our panda. So now we have this. We have our head. But we're still missing some parts. So we have to do the ears and then the arms and the legs next. Um, this is pretty easy. I already made three arms and one of the ears. So I'm going to show you how to make an ear. I'm going to show you how to make an arm. And then you're going to want to pause and make the rest. So I'm going to show you how to do a, let's do the ear first because it's easier and then I'll show you how to do the arms. So you're going to want to make two of these. I'm going to show you how to make one and then you'll go off and do the other one. But all of this basically the ear is, is it's a, it's a triple cap band with six stitches in it and then we just tie it, like kind of tie it off and then set it aside. Okay. So once again, we're going to start with a triple cat band. So we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. That's one, two, three. And then we're going to be putting six stitches into this cat band. So we'll do that. I'm not going to explain this too much because we've already done like two cat bands, I think. <laughs> yeah, we have. So that's one stitch. Those two stitches. Three. Four. Five. 
and then six. So once you have six stitches in your cap in your cap band, you're just gonna want to count to make sure. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then instead of going to the cap band, you're gonna go through this first loop here, and we're just gonna pull the band through everything on our hook. Both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull it tight but not too tight because we're just going to set this aside. And that's an ear. So you're going to want to make two of these. And then the very last thing I need to show you how to make is the arms. I already have three. You want four of these total because it's for the arms and legs. They're made exactly the same. But I'm going to just show you how to do one. Then you would pause the video and go make the rest. Once I finish picking up bands because I think... I'm going to need more. I'm like pretty sure that these are the last of my light blue bands. It's so sad. I love this color. Okay. So we're going to start the arm slash leg the same way. We're going to do a tripled cat band with six stitches in it. And then we do two rows normal and then other stuff happens and I'll show you what to do. <laughs> But we're going to start with the tripled cap band with six stitches in it. So once again, we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. So one, two, three. And we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. Both ends back on. Push the back one over the front one. And we're just going to do five more stitches. So we have six stitches in total. I'm not going to explain this too much because... We literally just did this for the year, so hopefully you've got the hang of it. But we're just doing a triple cat band with six stitches in it. I feel like in my tutorials, whenever I do the starting bits, like the cat bands, I always try to go really slow because I feel like when you're a beginner, this is like the worst part, is just trying to like make a bit to start with. That's six, yeah. So you're gonna want to count to make sure you have sti- ah, I can't speak today. You're gonna want to count to make sure you have six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're gonna go through the first loop. You're gonna make a stitch, and then you're gonna put your C-clip on this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do two rows normal. So we're just going to do two rows of single stitches around this. And at the end of each of the rows, you should still be at six loops. And then after that, I'll tell you what to do next. So we're going to just do two rows of single stitches. This should be really quick because it's so tiny. But we're just doing two rows of single stitches. I feel like I'm going really fast right now. I'm sorry if I am. But I feel like this is a little, also a little bit repetitive, at least with the steps, so... Yeah... But once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a, sti <laughs> a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it and move it up. And then we're gonna do another round, of, another row around of single stitches. So we'll just keep going around. Because this will be row two. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're going to go through the loop that has a C-clip on it. You're going to pull a band through everything on your hook. I think I pulled it a little too far. Hold up. Yeah, I lost it. Okay. So you go through the loop. You pull a band through everything on your hook. Then you push the back one over the front one, and you're going to pull it tight but not too tight. And you can just take the C-clip out at this point. And we'll pull this tight but not too tight. And we'll set aside. So you want to make four of these arm leg things. You're going to want to make two ears. And then we'll have our two main pieces for our panda. And then once you have all this, you're going to come back. And I'm going to show you how to attach everything and make the bamboo. Because we haven't made our little piece of bamboo yet. But I'll show you after we attach everything. And yeah, I think that's it. So 
go make everything and then come back. Okay, so we're gonna start by attaching the head onto the body. And this is also tricky because we want to stuff the head before we attach it, so get your stuffing. Stuff the head. We're also starting to hit that point in the tutorial where my voice feels very, very tired. <gasps> this always happens. I think I'm used to talking for like two hours straight and then I'm not. I always wonder how teachers do it though, because teachers can like lecture for like multiple hours per day and they're fine. Like they have some seriously strong voices, I guess. I don't know. Because <laughs> after like an hour of filming a tutorial, by the hour, second hour, I've been doing tutorials for so long as well, my voice just feels tired. It's hard to explain. But once you have stuffed the head, we are going to attach it to the body. And I like to undo this band we tied. And I'm going to use it to tie the head into the body. So, I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to pick whichever part I want to be the front. And then I'm going to come through part of the panda. And then I'm going to grab this band we undid. I'm just going to use it to tie the head onto the body. Like that. So obviously we're going to need more. We're going to have to slip knot a couple more times around just to get it to attach. I'm going to probably do two more times. So I'm going to come like right here-ish. Maybe on the side a little bit more. Yeah, right here. I'm going to go through that loop. I'm going to go through part of the body. Then I'm going to pull a band through everything. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. Like that. Like that. I'm going to put one in the front here because it seems a little awkward looking. Yeah. Put one in the front here. I'm going to tie it about right there. Just tie it down. I'm also realizing I forgot to put the safety eyes. Hold up. Before we finish tying, I'm going to put the safety eyes in. I'm going to take out a little bit of stuffing because safety eyes usually take up more space. And I'm going to put my panda safety eyes in. You probably should have done this before. I always forget. But I'm just going to stab my eye right in the middle of where the spots are. If you don't have eye spots, you'll just put your eyes wherever you feel like you like them. Getting the backs onto the safety eyes is always so hard. Don't mind me just putting the backs on off camera because I cannot do this on camera. Okay, we've got one. So I'm going to just put the other one in real quick. Once again, I'm going to come right in the middle of where the eye splashy thingy is, like his little eye mark. And then I'm going to just put the back on off camera because... And if you have beads, you would just tie them in. You can honestly tie them in later when we do the nose. But if you're using safety eyes, you definitely want to do it now so you can put the backs on. You actually probably should have put them on when we were stuffing it, but I forgot. Because I always forget to put the backs on. I can't tell you how many of my loom creations, they don't have the backs on the safety eyes because I forget until I'm done and then I'll be like, oops. And then I'll just put the, like stab the safety eyes into the creation and be like, it's fine. And it usually is fine, but... Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to finish tying the head down. And you don't have to tie your head exactly as many times as me. I'm going to just tie it on both the sides and then probably one in the back as well. Just to make sure it's secure. But you can probably feel when your head is secure onto the body. And just stop at whatever point that is for you. I think I'm just going to do one in the back. And then I think we're good. I also like to leave all the tails out until I have everything... Until I'm happy with where everything is, just so that way if I need to undo a slip knot, it's easier to find where it is than if I hit all the tail hit all the tails right away. Okay, so I'm kinda happy with that. So I'm gonna put his Well, I'm gonna tuck all these tails in. Well, 
we could put his ears on in first. Let's put his ears on. Yeah. So we're going to get our ears. And just like with the head, we're going to undo this stitch on the bottom. We're going to kind of measure where we want his ear to be. And then we're just going to use this band to tie it into the head. And the way Brooklyn did it was she just left her ear like this. And this is cute, but I... I did tie my ears down twice, but that was kind of just a preferencing. They do kind of look cute just being crazy like that. I might leave them like that for this guy. Once again, we'll undo the stitch. And we'll tie it in. Okay. Then he has ears. <laughs> kind of funny how quickly he comes together. So I'm going to tuck all the neck ones in before we do the arms and legs. So just tuck all your neck tails in. And to do that you're just going to come up through like various parts of your panda and then just pull them into his, the inside so no one can see them. And this guy's fairly easy to tuck the tails into because he's pretty big. So it's not hard at all. This is the last one. Like that. <laughs> he looks so funny and cute right now. Oh my god, I love him. Okay. So, I'm going to show you how to attach the arms. I'm going to show you how I did it on this guy. Oh, great, we're getting a camera battery warning. Hold on. Okay, camera battery's been switched. We're all good. We're ready to go. So, I'm going to show you how to attach the arms the same way I did on this guy. I know I showed you this guy at the start who was having, like, arm issues. We're going to ignore him. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I did these. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our arm or our leg, whichever one you want to attach first. I think I'm going to start up here, and then I'm going to do the legs last. We're going to undo this band, and we're going to use it to tie into our panda. So I'm going to come about right here and see where that is. I'm just going to tie it in. Ah. Oh god, I always hate when I accidentally pull this band too far through. Because that happens sometimes. Okay, so we're just going to go back in. And then we'll tie it. Tie it in. And I usually like to tie the arms twice because, as you can see, there's some more loops that are kind of just like flopping around then. So I like to come opposite of where the other stitch is and I'll just tie in a second time. Get a band and you just pull it through everything and just tie his arm in. Like that. And then he has a hand. So we're just going to repeat that for all the arms and legs. I'll show you again on the other side. We're going to undo that slip stitch. We're going to pick a spot where the arm is. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to tie it in. Oops. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the bands undid themselves. We're going to tie it in. There we go. Pull it tight. And once again, you can kind of see where we stitch it if you looked at the bottom. Go opposite of that. And then just go through another part of the panda. And then tie in again. Pull tight. And then he has hands. Okay, so we're going to do the legs the exact same way. As you can tell, I'm still not tucking in any of the tails yet, just because if I hate where an arm is after I finish them all, it's easier to move, like I mentioned earlier, than when you... I think it's better to attach, like, all the arms and legs than hide the tails, just because if you want to move it, it's so much easier than if you hide them, because then you got to go find where the tail is. Okay. So once you undo, also if you're having problems holding onto this band after you undo it, you can put both bands on your finger and then come where you want the leg and then it's easier to tie it in. 
Because I know the way I was holding it, I kept accidentally losing the leg. So it's definitely easier if you just put both the bands on your finger for a second. And I really think you only need to tie the arms and legs in twice. I don't think I've tied them in more than twice on any of the pandas I've made. They definitely only needed to be tied twice. And this guy comes together pretty quickly, as you can tell. Undo that band. See, so once you undo the slip knot, I think it's easier if you just put these bands on your finger to hold the leg. Then you pick your spot, tie it in. And then tie it in the other side. Like that. And if you are happy where all the arms and legs are, I kind of like how his are just sticking out everywhere. You might hate that look. I kind of like the just sticking out legs everywhere look. But you could totally move him closer in. You can tie him down in various ways so maybe his hands are like tied down. But I like him just sticking out like that. And then I'm going to give him a piece of bamboo here. But first, we need to tuck in all the tails. So I'm going to tuck in all the tails. And we're going to do the same thing as we did for the head. We're just going to come up by the tail and then pull it in. And this guy's pretty big, so like I said, it's not too bad tucking in the tails. But we do need to tuck like all eight of them in. And I'm going to tuck them all in off camera just so we can go quicker. Because we're almost done with our panda. This guy honestly might be my favorite. Like the one I made in this tutorial of the four pandas I made. I thought the pink one would be cute, but I kind of messed up his arms. I'm definitely going to have to fix him. <laughs> Oops. But I think this blue guy might be my favorite of the ones I've made. I just think he looks so cute. Brooklyn really did such an amazing job designing this. When she sent me the panda, I was like, it was everything I dreamed of in a panda. I was like, I don't know why I struggled for so long to make a panda, but I just did. Because I have always gotten panda, like, I know panda's a very popular animal. I don't know how else to explain that, but a lot of people like pandas. And I've always gotten requests like, can you please make a panda? And I've, I don't know, I've tried multiple times, I've struggled. And when she sent me her panda, I was like, that is the perfect, most cutest panda I have ever seen. So, once again, thank you Brooklyn for asking me to do the tutorial because I ended up making so many cute pandas and I just love it. I also kind of love how I've been making tutorials for other people, I feel like it's cool, I don't know. Like, working with other loomers is kind of fun as well, even though I always end up messaging them like, What the heck did you do here? I don't understand. But, it's always fun. Okay, so I talked to all my panda's tails in. He looks good. So we're gonna do the nose, and then we'll do the bamboo, and then our panda's done. So for the nose, I took two black bands, and I wrapped them five times around my hook. You can only wrap them four, but lately I've been liking the look when you wrap a band five times around your hook instead of four. Don't ask me why, I've been picky lately. But you can definitely only wrap it around four times if five's too tight, but I think I like the nose being a tiny bit tighter and that's why I do this. But it is kind of harder to slide over, so just keep that in mind. Also, if you have one of those fancy like nose safety beads, you could have put that in earlier, but I don't have any of those, so I'm just gonna make a nose. And then we're gonna, just going to tie it right in between our eyes. If I could go in between, okay. We're just going to tie it right in between. And I like to make the nose black as well, I think it's cute. Then we'll tuck our tail in. If I could, I'm kind of having issues coming up by the tail to tuck it in. There we go. Oh my god, this one turned out so adorable. Hold up, that is so cute. Okay. So, the very last, the other thing we need before I forget is we also need to give him a tail. So we're going to do the same thing, but I'm only going to wrap my bands four times around my hook. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to pull a white band through everything on my hook. Oops. What the heck is all this? Um, 
pull the white band through everything on my hook. And this is for his tail, in case you didn't know what we're doing. Actually, this should have been a this should have been a blue band. Whoops. Ignore that I said white band and pull a blue band through. I always get mixed up on my colors. It's fine. Pull a blue band through the tail. And then we're gonna just tie it in right on his butt. Because that's where the tail goes. go okay so it's official the last thing he needs is his bamboo and his cheeks so we're gonna do his cheeks real quick then I'll show you how to do his bamboo but for the cheeks you're gonna come right under the eye I'm gonna come about right here you're gonna pull a band through in the color you want your cheeks to be both ends back on your hook push the back one over the front one and pull tight but not too tight so you're gonna leave it a little bit loose and then you'll just hide your tail a lot of tail hiding in this design but it's not too bad oh my god that's adorable okay we're gonna do that on the other side so right under where the eye is probably right here pull our band through push the back one over the front one and then pull it tight but not too tight we hide our tail oh my god this guy's adorable he's my favorite sorry um okay so let's get our bands for our bamboo you're going to want two different colors of green, a lighter green and a darker green. If you want to do it the way I do it, the way she did it is she just did it all one color, so that works too. But I'm going to be doing two different colors again today. And I'm sorry, I forgot to undo. I forgot to open my bags of bands, so bear with me for a second. So I completely forgot to fish out the color they need for this but it's okay okay so like I said you want a darker green and a lighter green I'm just checking so okay so we're gonna start with our darker green we're gonna get two bands in our darker green color and we're gonna wrap them twice around our hook so we're just gonna go one two we'll do it again so one two and then we're going to get hold up sorry We're going to get our light green bands and we're going to chain up six doubled light green bands. So we're going to take a light green band, we're going to double it, and then we're just going to slide everything that is on our hook onto this band. You're just going to slide it on, like that. And like I said, we're going to want to chain up six, so that was one, we're going to double a band. Pull it through, both ends back on, two, eh. three, <laughs> four, lost the loop five and six and I kind of want this one to be maybe a little longer so I'm gonna do seven you can make it as long as you'd like I feel like this guy had a very short piece of bamboo this guy had a little bit of a longer piece so I'm gonna do seven chain ups today but on this guy I only did six just keep that in mind and then I'm gonna take a light green band pull it through everything Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dark green bands. We're going to wrap them around once. Or I guess twice. Ah, my camera's nearly falling. Like that. To give it the stripes. At least, this was kind of an extra step I did. She didn't do this. I did this on my own. But we're going to wrap them around like three times. So that was twice. I'm going to wrap it around three times. And it'll just give it this little stripe. I think it just adds something. This was a me thing I did on my own. I think it makes it look more like bamboo. The, it might not. It might just be me. <laughs> and then we're just going to make him hold his bamboo. 
So we can just use the tail to pull into the panda so that way we don't have to bother tucking it into that to into the bamboo because that's going to be hard because of how thin it is. So I usually just get this band and I'll pull it into my panda. And then I'll take a light blue band and I'll tie the top down. That's like more so it's like more in his hand. Let me zoom out so you can see better. But so we pulled the end in. It's kind of sticking out right there. It shouldn't be. Oop, okay. And we're just going to come kind of like in his hand. And we're going to tie the top part into his hand so it looks like he's holding it. We'll just tie it in. Oops, tight. And then it'll look like he has a piece of bamboo. How cute is that? Honestly, that's what I loved about her panda when she first sent me it too. Well, I showed you guys the photo in the start of the pic because it had a piece of bamboo and I was like, that's so genius. Why did I never think of that? But that is it for this panda design. So I hope you liked it. And once again, I said thank you so many times, but thank you so much to Brooklyn who let me, who asked me to make this tutorial and was so patient with me through all my college chaos in making it. And I posted this panda for a while ago for you guys. So I hope it was worth the wait. And you should definitely follow her on Instagram. She makes so many amazing things. I'll have her Instagram as well as mine linked down below. Um, I also have a couple hints of some stuff that's maybe coming to my channel soon that I want to show you before I go. So it is around Christmas time when I'm filming this. So we have a little something that I like. I'm going to let him be a little blurry so you can't fully see what he is. But I think you know what's coming to my channel soon. I'm so happy with how he looks. I can't wait to show him to you guys on a tutorial. And also give you guys a tutorial so you can make him. I also just made a fun kind of hat for one of my previous creations that is so ginormous I kind of can't fit into this frame. But you get the idea. And they should be coming within the coming weeks of when this tutorial is first put out. But yeah. So subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I'll have those two coming for sure. And I'm always working on new stuff and making new stuff. And I've also been making tutorials for a lot of different loomers. So thank you to all the loomers who've lately been asking me to make their tutorials. I always feel so honored when anyone asks me. Um, but yeah, so all our Instagrams will be down below. Uh, my Etsy shop will be linked as well. If you want to buy anything from my Etsy, I might be putting this panda on Etsy after I fix them up. Who knows, but you can check out my Etsy or check me out anywhere else. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So I hope your panda came out okay. If you make one, definitely share it with me. But I'm going to see you hopefully soon in another tutorial. Because I think that's it for this one. So, bye.